Hey guys, it is Cheesy here, and today I'm bringing you my PC build video. In this video, I'll be going over my custom-built gaming PC that is capable of 60 FPS at 1080p and is only 650 US dollars. I'll be going over each part in my build and explaining how this part is essential to the PC and why you should get it. I'll leave a link to my full build in the description, and also make sure to check out my setup video which I made this video in accordance with, and also make sure to check out my benchmarking videos to see specific frames per second on other games. I'll have assorted Overwatch, CSGO, and Battlefield 4 gameplay in the background. These games are pretty varied in terms of what they ask of the PC, and for example Overwatch and CSGO are pretty light on a PC, whereas Battlefield 4 requires a pretty decent uh, graphics card and CPU. And so, hopefully you can get kind of a taste of what these games will look like on this PC, but once again, make sure to check out my benchmarking video for specifics. So getting straight into the video, I'll start off with my processor. I use an AMD FX 8350 CPU. In my opinion, when it comes to Intel versus AMD, I admit that Intel does make really good processors and even better processors than AMD, but when you're looking for a budget build, especially one that's less than $1,000, you're going to want to get an AMD processor because while Intel has more efficient processors, AMD offers a really cheaper price. The FX 8350 offers a clock speed of 4.0 GHz, which is a lot more than other Intel boards. It's also an octa-core processor. This essentially means that it'll be really fast, and for a pretty cheap price, this is one of the best processors available. When I got this PC last year, I was initially going to get an Intel i5-4460. However, this is actually a, a lot cheaper compared to the 4460, at least at the time when I purchased it. And so, if you're looking to get a 4460, I recommend that you at least consider the 8350. In a nutshell, the AMD FX 8350 will get the job done for a price cheaper than Intel. Some alternatives to the FX 8350 include the Intel i5-4460 processor, the AMD FX 6300, or the AMD FX 8320. On to my graphics card, I have an EVGA super super clocked GTX 960 with 2GB of video RAM. I am satisfied with this card, but to be completely honest, it has trouble running games that are new such as The Witcher 3 or Rise of the Tomb Raider. It's a perfectly good card, but because it only has 2GB of video RAM, it can't always, you know, maintain those high quality textures or ultra settings. You will be able to run about 75% or even 80% of games on ultra without a hitch with this card, however for that 20%, it could be a bit troublesome. You may have to turn your settings down to medium, and that can kind of be bad, especially when you're paying so much for a custom PC. Assassin's Creed Syndicate had a really bad PC port, but it was the first game where I just couldn't play because I didn't have enough video RAM. While I recommend this card for the majority of players, I recommend that for those who can, look into the alternatives, such as a GTX 970, maybe even a GTX 980, or any other card which has more than 2GB of video RAM, such as 4GB, or maybe even 6. With the two most expensive parts out of the way, I'll get into my motherboard. You need a motherboard that is compatible with your CPU, and so in this case, I got an AM3 Plus motherboard. Specifically, I got the Asus M5A97LE R2.0. You don't need this exact make, however, I recommend that you get a motherboard that is compatible, has multiple ports for connecting things like hard drives, and that is over maybe $70. Onto my storage, I have a 1TB Seagate Barracuda hard disk drive, as well as a 250GB Samsung 850 EVO solid state drive. I've had my PC for over a year, and therefore, I'm actually really running low on space. I have less than 100 gigabytes left on my solid state in my HDD. If you're going to want to play games like GTA 5 or Fallout 4, which this PC will be able to run, you might want to invest in a 2 terabyte hard drive so that you have a lot more space. I have 8 gigabytes of RAM, specifically two 4 gigabyte sticks. At the moment, I haven't had any problems. However, if you're looking to have this PC for a long time without upgrading, you may want to get at least 12 gigabytes or maybe even 16, because that way you won't really have to upgrade for a long time. 
I have a 600 watt Thermaltake TR2 power supply. This PC doesn't really need 600 watts of power. To be honest, I think it only needs about 300. But it's better to be safe than sorry. If you really want to go cheaper, then I guess you could get a 500 watt power supply. But with 600 watts, you can't go wrong. Finally, I have a Bitfinex Neos case. I love this case because it's cheap, it looks nice, and it's easy to disassemble and reassemble. Bitphoenix is generally a good brand for making budget cases, so you don't necessarily have to get the Neos, but the Neos is still a really good case. So that is it for this build, guys. Thank you for watching. If you do end up getting this build, feel free to ask any questions in the comments. Also feel free to leave a like and check out my other PC videos, such as my benchmarking ones as I mentioned earlier and my setup video. I really hope this helps those of you thinking to get into PC gaming. Um, this video isn't about the pros and cons of PC gaming, but uh, in my opinion, getting a PC has been the best decision that I've ever made. You know, like uh, whether it's been YouTube or uh, just playing games, it's amazing. And I forgot to mention that this PC can easily uh, record and edit videos as well. So once again, I hope this helps, and I will see you guys later. Bye.